Hello there, and welcome to the perfect portfolio. This learning video is your complete guide to financial ratio analysis. For those that don't know, ratio analysis is a quantitative method of gaining insight into a company's financial health by studying its financial statements. It is the technique of comparing the relationship or ratio between two or more line items of financial data from a company's financial statements, and is used as a way of making fair comparisons across time and between different companies or industries. Hence, basic knowledge of financial statements such as balance sheet and income statement, and its various line items is a prerequisite for this learning video. We will cover the following ratios. 1. Profitability ratios. 2. Return ratios. 3. Liquidity ratios. 4. Solvency ratios. And 5. Activity ratios. Without any further ado, let's get started. Number 1. Profitability ratios. Gross profit margin is equal to gross profit divided by revenue. Gross profit margin measures how well each unit of sales is utilized to cover the cost of goods sold. Operating profit margin is equal to earnings before interest and tax, EBIT, divided by revenue. Operating margin measures the operational efficiency of a company and the extent to which cash and non-cash operating expenses deplete sales. Net profit margin is equal to profit after tax divided by revenue. The net profit margin measures how much net income or earnings is generated for every unit of revenue received. Number 2. Return Ratios Return on assets is equal to profit after tax divided by total assets. Return on assets measures how efficiently a company generates profits for every unit of assets. Total assets is generally calculated as an average of the current and previous year while excluding cash and marketable securities. Return on equity is equal to profit after tax divided by shareholders' equity. Return on equity measures how efficiently a company generates profits for every unit of shareholders' equity. Return on capital employed is equal to earnings before interest and taxes divided by shareholders' equity plus long-term debt. Return on capital employed measures how efficiently a company generates profits for every unit of invested capital. It is the amount of money a company makes that is above the required rate of return or average cost of debt and equity capital. Return on common equity is equal to profit after tax minus preference dividends divided by shareholders equity minus preference shares. It does not consider preference share capital and is typically greater than the required rate of return. Number 3. Liquidity Ratios Current ratio is equal to current assets divided by current liabilities. It measures a company's ability to meet its current liabilities, payable within a year, with its current assets such as cash, accounts receivable, inventory. Quick ratio is equal to current assets less inventory and prepaid expenses, divided by current liabilities. The quick ratio is a more conservative liquidity measure as it assesses a company's capacity to pay its current liabilities without selling its inventory or obtaining additional financing. It measures a company's ability to meet its short-term obligations with its more liquid assets, thus excluding inventory and prepaid expenses. Cash ratio is equal to cash plus cash equivalents and marketable securities, divided by current liabilities. It is a strict liquidity measure as it assesses a company's capacity to pay its current liabilities with its most liquid assets such as cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities, etc. since these assets are most readily available and easy to sell. Number 4. Solvency Ratios Debt-to-equity ratio is simply equal to the total debt divided by total equity. A ratio greater than 1 indicates that the company has more debt capital in comparison to equity share capital, and vice versa. The debt-to-equity ratio indicates how a company is funded and reflects its capital structure. It also shows how much of debt can be covered by shareholders' equity in case of company liquidation. Interest coverage ratio is equal to earnings before interest and taxes divided by interest expense. The interest coverage ratio measures the ability of a company's earnings to cover the interest costs on its debt obligations. For instance, if the ratio is 2, it implies 50% of EBIT is used to pay interest expenses. Debt to assets ratio is equal to the total debt divided by total assets. 
It measures the proportion of a company's assets financed by short-term and long-term debt. A higher ratio implies a greater degree of leverage and financial risk. Number 5. Activity Ratios Asset Turnover Ratio is equal to net sales divided by total assets. This ratio measures how efficiently a company uses its assets to generate sales. A higher asset turnover indicates that assets are being used efficiently to generate revenue whereas a low ratio implies inefficient asset utilization and too much tied up capital. Inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. This ratio measures how efficiently a company uses and manages its inventory. A higher inventory turnover ratio indicates that the inventory is moving rapidly and is managed efficiently. A lower inventory turnover suggests slow movement of inventory and more tied up capital. Days inventory is equal to 365 divided by inventory turnover. Inventory days measures the average length of time a company holds on to its inventory and is expressed in number of days. A higher inventory days indicates obsolete inventory and more capital tied up whereas lower inventory days implies rapid sales and high inventory turnover rate. Receivables turnover ratio is equal to net sales divided by average receivables. This ratio measures how efficiently a company manages its credit sales and converts its account receivables into cash, thereby determining the effectiveness of credit extension to customers and credit recovery. A higher ratio signals that a company is able to convert its receivables into cash very quickly. Days receivables is equal to 365 divided by receivables turnover. Receivable days is a measure of how quickly, in terms of days, a company can recover cash from credit sales. It is also known as average collection period and ideally it should be lower, so as to ensure sufficient liquidity. Payables turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold divided by average payables. This ratio measures the rate at which a company pays off its creditors. A higher payables turnover indicates that the company has unfavorable credit terms and is required to make payments quickly. A lower payables turnover suggests lenient credit terms, thus reduced pressure on cash flows. Days payables is equal to 365 divided by payables turnover. Payable days is a measure of how quickly, in terms of days, a company pays off its creditors. With that we come to the end of this video. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Hope you found it useful. Please check out our social media and if you like the content, be sure to drop some likes, comments and share it with your connections. Thanks for watching.